I believe that right now, we have an opportunity that many of us have never had in our lives, and most likely, God willing, we will never ever have in our lives again. Let me explain what that is. You know, my wife told me that she was in a parking lot going shopping, and everybody's fighting over parking spots. Everybody's aggressive. Then finally, she gets into the supermarket, and on checkout, there's a woman in front of her who has a wagon full of chicken and food. And that's pretty standard around this time of year, around Passover, Pesach time. Everybody's shopping lots and lots and lots of food. But a woman in another aisle, in kind of an aggressive, condescending tone, says, you know, you can save some food for the rest of us. Wow. I heard another story, troubling, of this woman who was in a kosher supermarket who didn't appear to be dressed like an observant Jew. And there she is holding kosher meat, checking out. And another woman says to her, you know, you can get your meat anywhere. Why don't you save it for the religious people? Disaster. But now on the flip side, I heard an unbelievable story of this guy who's in quarantine. He's isolated, him and his children. They're locked in their house. The kids are going crazy, nothing to do. And all of a sudden, on day two of quarantine, these packages start showing up at his door from Amazon. All these, these games and toys and things for his kids to play with. And then more deliveries, food, vegetables, and people, neighbors, strangers, all kinds of people started sending food to him so that him and his family will have food and games and things to keep them occupied and fed and taken care of. Wow! You see an amazing thing. People's true Colors shine at a time like this. Yes, we're living in unprecedented times because never before have we ever been presented with an opportunity that we have right now. Are we going to get into this fight for survival, this survival of the fittest, this aggressive, I need to take care of myself mode? Or are we going to switch modes? Is it not going to be about me? but about what can I do for someone else? There's a fork in the road here. Are we going to trade our integrity for our survival? I heard an unbelievable story. I can't verify the details, but the story of the Blush of a Rebbe, a Hasidic Rebbe, who was in a concentration camp. One day he's in a barrack, and hundreds of Jews are packed into that one barrack. They hadn't eaten in three days. All of a sudden, a Nazi SS officer comes in, and he, they're looking for him specifically, and they call him up to the front, and he's standing there, and they knew that if they can break the morale of this big Hasidic rabbi, they'll break the morale of all the Jews who were there. And so the Nazi pulls out a stick of margarine, and he says, Jew, you hungry? The Rebbe says, yes. He says, you want it? He says, yeah. And he drops it to the floor. He says, go ahead, you still want it? He says, yeah. Then the Nazi takes his boots, and he steps his muddy boot on top of the margarine and he smears it into the ground. And he says, go ahead, it's all yours. And all the Jews in the barrack are looking. Is he going to trade in his integrity, his dignity for his survival? Will he become an animal in this very moment just to be able to have food? And right then and there, the Bluj of Arebi drops to the floor and starts scraping up the margarine. And the faces of all the Jews hang low, and some start crying because they broke the Bluj of a Rebbe. And this Nazi goes to run out because he's laughing his head off. Look, I broke him. And he goes to get all the other Nazi SS officers. And in the meantime, the Bluj of a Rebbe finishes. He's ripping off buttons from his uniform, and he's scraping up the margarine. And he stands up, and he holds the, the, the buttons with the margarine. And he sees all the Jews staring at him. And he says, my friends, it's Hanukkah. And he rips off a few strings from his uniform and he puts them into this, these little buttons with the margarine. He takes a little fire from a lantern and he begins to make the brachas on the menorah. And he lights these little buttons with margarine. And the Nazi SS comes back in, furious, as he sees a room full of Jews all singing, Ma'os Tzor Yeshuasi. At that moment, he had a choice. 
Will I drop my dignity? Will I fall to the ground like an animal? Or will I retain my dignity and integrity? Yes, we're living in unprecedented times because we have an opportunity now that we've never had before and we may never, God willing, have again. Every single one of us during this very difficult and painful time is presented with a challenge. We all need to survive. There's going to be a limitation on food, perhaps, at certain times. The question is, are we going to be thinking about ourselves or are we going to be thinking about someone else? Are we going to become selfish or are we going to become selfless? Am I going to be thinking about myself at every single moment or will I be thinking about my neighbors who are in isolation, people who are totally quarantined, people who may be lonely? What about the elderly? What about the sick? What about those who are immunocompromised? Who needs my help? Who can I take care of? What can I do? Or is it going to be about me? How do I protect myself? How do I save myself? We're all presented right now with a fork in the road. And we have to make a choice. Which person am I going to be? And challenging times will bring out our true colors. My blessing to us all is that every single one of us use this opportunity to be able to rise to the occasion, to be able to become the most giving, selfless, caring, compassionate people that we could possibly be. And God willing, we are all going to get through this together and we're going to look back and we're going to say not only did we survive, not only did we get through it together, but we became bigger, better, more compassionate, more caring, more loving, more unified human beings.